but if you come at me with a question like that, I want to give you the full and total answer. I don't want to email you back four words and say, don't ever think about it. Five. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Exclamation point. Danny. Joel, what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> Not much. How are you doing? Never felt better, never had more. There you go. You sent an email. What is the question? So I was looking at setting up a new store in an area that has no laundromats um, in a, for, a, for a long distance. And I was wondering if you would negotiate a lease on a spa empty space. How much money do you have to lose? 50. <laughs> so you don't mind losing $50,000? No, I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose it. No. Nope. Well, there's your answer. Okay. So keep you want, keep you want me streets. to get, well, look, some history. You hired me to do this. What? Yep. How long ago? Four or five months ago, maybe. Almost six months ago. Okay. So there are literally, I watch the news, homeless camps. Yeah, horrible. Laundromats Show. everywhere that are falling apart, that are decrepit where all of the infrastructure is in place. But your position okay. is that you want a laundromat so badly that you're willing to go build one. Have you checked on what the environmental impact fees alone are in Oregon? We did in Vancouver. Basically a permit is 6,500 bucks. Per washer? No. A permit to build the space out to run a laundromat is like six, six look, I believe it's like 6,500. Look, look further. They're not including okay. the impact fees. If you build a brand, well, they, if you build a brand they, new they, house, they're going to charge you yeah. sixty five hundred dollars for the washer dryer for the drainage, and you don't notice that because a brand new home in a good neighborhood, the developer is going to come in, they're going to put all the drains in, the builder is going to come in and either build spec homes or build a house to your specifications, a custom. And that sure. almost $7,000 is rolled into the purchase price. You don't even notice it. If you're a line item guy, you know, my dad was a contractor. So I look at that and I'm like, Jesus, they're charging $58 for every outlet in the wall. That's crazy. If not 158, but yeah. when, when you're doing a new laundromat, that environmental impact fee isn't being rolled into the cost of a $700,000 home. It's being charged for every single washer. And that's one of the reasons, not the smallest or the largest, it's one of the reasons why free laundromat exists. I've never seen oh. anyone trying to sell their failed laundromat for $300,000 and the tagline is, you can't build it for that. They're not that smart. You don't see yeah. t-shirts at Walmart that say, eh, it's $9.99, but hell, we had it made in Malaysia for 17 cents. Who cares? You can't yeah. go to Walmart to the register and argue that cash register uh, attendant down either, can you? Well, I don't want to pay nope. nine ninety nine for this Corona T-shirt. I think it's worth about seventeen yeah, cents. No. She's going to look at you blurry eyed. Yeah, she don't care. This look. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not here to motivate you into anything. But you went dark for some time, and now I'm getting an email that says. Will you, Danny, negotiate a lease for a brand new laundromat? If I do that, let me answer the question. Sure, absolutely, I can do that. If I do that, you're going to, if you have ever get the store open, you are likely never going to profit. So what's the point of doing that? Yeah, if it's the case, yes, for sure. Oh, it's the case. That's right. Yeah. You can go to the other side of the aisle, if you will, and talk to distributors and sit down with plumbers and electricians and get all of the facts and figures. Why would you spend well over $100,000, not including environmental impact fees, to build a laundromat in a space when so many of them are existing? You've already hired me. You just need to scout yeah. the stores, 
put them in front of me and we call. Okay. Argue with me. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me why this popped into your head. Leave emotion at the door, but tell me why. I, I, I suppose impatience, Danny. On your my word, end. not mine. It's been yes. almost six months, but you're impatient. So when you're laying in bed spinning, hard to yep. sleep. I, again, I apologize. I'm not looking up your file and figuring out everything about Joel and trying to you know, crawl up your no. ass and say, oh, well, this is why he's wanting to do this now. Whatever your personal circumstances are, whatever anyone's circumstances are, I'm trying to tend to my sheep. I'm trying to make sure you don't do this. I've got two videos on my channel. One says she lost $300,000. Did you watch it? Yes, I believe I watched that one. It's an hour long. It's a young yes. lady that consulted with me on the phone, and I never heard from her again. And she then had, she bought one, eh? She had spent three hundred grand on a laundromat. Never made a penny, yeah. never will. It's not a fun video to watch. It's heartbreaking. But again, yeah. th they had the money. Her husband does very well. And she went out and drank uh -huh. the Kool-Aid. There is no Kool-Aid on my side of the aisle. It is just the facts and figures that say, uh, you know, I get this email from you and I'm saying, can I negotiate? A That's easy, dude. We can call new developments or strip mall centers where there's no laundromat all day. Now, you might even, and I'm good at this, so I'd even tell that landlord or his agent, I'd say, look, we want you to spend the money on TI. You, want, you know what tenant improvement money is. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. We sign the lease. Whether this, the existing laundromat with all of the gas, water, electric, all the infrastructure, not the sign, not the non-existent goodwill, not the old equipment, none of that is what we're after. It's the infrastructure. Sure that's in place, yes. the environmental impact fees, which have been paid. So we sign that lease and then we hit them up for rent abatement and tenant improvement money. If the air conditioning isn't there, that's not part of the TI. It's either swamp cooled because it's Oregon or the air conditioning hasn't worked in years because the tenant is so poor they haven't even turned it on. Well, we yeah. say you need to put 10 tons of AC on the roof. They can't balk about that. Oh no, we're not, we're gonna vanilla the space. Rather than, we're yeah. the bird in the hand. And on the other side, they're going to say, well, we're not going to spend the money on HVAC because we hope to get a new tenant. Oh, tell me what national chain is going to come in there with a swamp cooler <laughs> or without air conditioning nope, at all. None. You get it. None. We're yeah. in a phenomenal position to argue our points. And that's what a negotiation is. Don't, don't you ever forget it. It's an argument. Yeah. And we're arguing those points but and getting has, not what we want, but what we need because we're saying it is a laundromat, it will remain a laundromat, there's no reason to get rid of the laundromat. And what you're asking me to do, I'm trying to be emphatic here, is go out and negotiate. Now, if that landlord is willing to say, oh yeah, we're a big center, we've got a Walmart, we own four million square feet all over the state, we'll kick back that TI for you, right? They'll help you with the build out, right? I don't know if you've sure. looked into this, right? Do you no, really? No, that, that's is. Go ahead. Finish the sentence. Is there a free lunch? Are they going to help you with the build out? I don't know that. Sure. Absolutely. Happens all the time. Do you think that they're just going to give you that money for nothing? Absolutely no. not. They're going to increase your rent drastically. We get a dollar a square foot. I just did one in Connecticut for 98 cents. Oh, that won't work here. Everybody says it won't work here. I don't know why I get... Yes. 10 emails this week. Does it work in Canada? I've got success stories right on my channel in Canada. They're nice yeah. there. That's the only difference I'm aware of. Yeah. You, you put some landlords in front of me. I, I mean, I must be a real idiot because I should say, sure, Joel, yeah, I'll negotiate the lease for you. I'll do it. I'll get the second half of my fee and I'll never hear from you again. No, you... you I want I want this straight goods, Danny. People don't hold up their phone and say, "Hey, YouTube, I lost 50 I don't know if you're kidding when you said fifty. If you meant fifty thousand or you meant fifty dollars. <laughs> no, I I I'm playing with fifty thousand is what I I want to invest, but I don't want to. So take that fifty thousand dollars. Yep. 
and buy a Rolex or buy some gold or do something else that's easy, easy to liquidate. I'm not a financial planner, dude. I don't play one on TV. Yeah. If you're looking, it, you want a, let, let's get personal for a minute. You want a laundromat so yeah. badly that you're willing to make those. Or did you ever speak with a distributor or two or 10 before you found me? Yes. Okay. Before you found me or after? Yes. Um, before I found you. Okay. So I remind to me. The, to, to the Hibsch dealer. Sure. Well, that, that's neither here nor there. I don't want to say they're all the same. I don't know who they are. I don't yeah. know their names. The brand name doesn't matter. I taught you that. The equipment's all the same. No yes. consumer using a laundromat in the history of the universe ever walks out of said laundromat and says, man, I really enjoyed that Maytag equipment. No. When the Uber shit. pulls up and it's a Ferrari, you're like, damn, how am I going to get in the back seat? When, yeah. it's, when it's a Mercedes, yeah. we say, well, I'm lucky. I didn't hire an XL, yeah. but here's a Mercedes. You see a Hyundai, you might have an opinion. There is no Hyundai or Mercedes in laundromat equipment. How did the conversation go when you spoke to the distributor back in the day? Uh, you only want my equipment. Well, theirs is the best. Exactly. They're all the, they're all the best. According but you to left that conversation or that lunch meeting. Did you know what the equipment was, was worth? What it costs? What they wanted to charge you for it? I did get a quote. So how much is a 50 pound front loader? You know, I can't remember offhand. I can't remember. A, a, a lot of money. They're going to charge you double across the board for every piece of equipment. And it starts with that conversation. It starts with that slice of pizza. It starts with that sandwich. We're the best. You don't know. How no. could you know? Again, what is it? BC before Christ. I'm not calling myself godlike or anything else, but I should come up with something, you know, BD before Danny. A lot of my clients go and they talk to distributors. They listen to the hubbub. Or God forbid they buy a laundromat. Yeah. Then they start to do research and try to figure out what the realities are. Maybe they're just looking for information on how to build their store up and get out of the hole they're in because they'll never recoup that 300 grand. Then they find me. Then they email yeah. me. I have a phone consultation with a guy tomorrow who already owns a laundromat. And he's looking to dig out of that hole. It's hard. It, it's a hard conversation. You were in it. What's that? You were in that situation, were you? Oh, I bought my first Your store. First? At, you know, I, I was this, didn't have quite as many gray hairs, and I'm the same person inside. But when I did that, I thought, I'm the master of the universe. I can't be torn down. $250,000, talk them down from three. I don't know why they're always 300 k but they are. Yeah. Then day one, I walked in there, I was almost in tears because I'm the son of a locksmith. Ah, you're right on time, Lamekins. Make yourself a drink, baby. No, thanks, Dutch. Who are you and how did you get in here? I'm a locksmith, and I'm a locksmith. And I'm in there with a key ring as big as my head trying to get the machines open. I thought, I set aside an hour to pull all the money out of the machines. It was probably six and a half hours before I gave up. I couldn't get the, my fingers, oh, my fingers were bleeding. I couldn't get the keys to work. But I'm the kind of guy, bootstrap, let me fix this one problem. My mind was yeah. spinning. I'm going to sell this laundromat. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to paint the walls and sell it for more than I paid. Then I thought, Truly, I had this internal conversation. That's not me. I'm going to fix the problems starting with this one. What it was, the key ring, one key started machine, open machine one, and then you go down. Why do they have so many keys? Because over the years, coin boxes get broken into. They don't work well. Replaced. They, end, they end up being replaced. I closed the store for the first time ever. I went to the distributor. Now to this day, that store has three keys key to the changer, one key to the washers, one to the dryers. They're not the same coin boxes. I spent a couple grand on new coin boxes. Every one of them had a key. There's yeah. no key to the front door because the doors, the, the doors stay open. 
Why does 7 Eleven have 24. locks? Yeah. Maybe I'm going 24. a little bit overboard here, but I think that this is very important and I'd like to educate others as I often do. No, you're not. You're not going overboard. Keep going. Well, I, there's nothing else I can say that's not going to hurt your feelings. You don't want to. You, you, can, you, can, <laughs> you can hurt my feelings. No, Go no. For it. I, you don't want to build a laundromat, my friend. Okay, perfect. You could build one and you might make money. Could, might, mm, I'd rather hedge my bets. I gamble. I play craps. I love it. I love throwing dice. I love Vegas. There's nothing like the Bellagio at 3 a.m. If you're a guy that pulls the handle on the machine, you're going to lose money. You know that. Yeah. That's gambling. Yeah. Playing dice, fun. Free drinks, free rooms, free meal. It's a different thing. My wife is right next to me stealing the chips off the table and putting them in her purse. They all know the game. I enjoy the sport. I'm yeah. not there to try to pay the mortgage. But when it comes to business, yeah. you had better damn well hedge those bets. You'd better damn well understand why does free laundromat exist because so many times in 28 countries and counting, almost all 50 states, we have done this together. Over It's work, dude. You've got to put in the work. You've got to plug the information in the document that we share and do the thing. <laughs> Sleep well, my friend. Because at the end of the yeah. day, if you buy one for any price, if it's $50,000, wow. Why would you give someone that? when they don't own anything but some busted up old equipment. Look junk, okay? The landlord literally and figuratively holds the keys to your future. The landlord is the one who can Not hand the you right. The landlord can hand you the keys to that future. Then your 50k, keep it. Yes. Once you have the lease that's when you go back to the distributor you spoke with. That's going to be a very different conversation. Hey, remember yeah. me? I was interested in maybe perhaps someday buying a laundromat. You're going to call him third on the list. Hip, Speed Queen, Wascomat, ADC, Dexter, Continental, Gerbo, all of them. Hey, silly, here's my laundromat. I own it. I've got 15 yeah. years of runway. Come and give me the best price for the equipment I need to replace. And don't dawdle and don't tell me how your stuff is Ferrari. There is none. <laughs> Slam the phone down. Two of them won't show up because they don't have the bandwidth to build more than one store and they're already robbing somebody else. It's a necessary evil. The same way that a dentist straight out, straight out of college needs a new spit sink. I don't know what those spit <laughs> sinks cost. I don't know what they're worth. I guarantee they charge 10 times what a sink for your house is because it's medical equipment. What a joke. Yeah. And you're hey, fresh question. out of college and you took 18 years to, to get your degree and you're a dentist and you're thinking, well, that's just what it costs. I hope your cousin's yeah. a plumber because he would be better to install that spit sink and the drill and everything else. I don't know. You were saying. I got a question for you. Um, Chinese equipment. What have you heard now? Not much. Okay. You, you had one person that was getting it. That yep. was buying it. You haven't heard anything back. Send send me the. I'm sure you saw it on YouTube. Send me a link to that. To that video. Go, you go find it and find the video and send email me the link, and I'll happily fact find for you. But I know that yeah, if I remember correctly, the equipment isn't going to have a maintenance guy local. So where are you at? That's right. That's right. So I that's, think that he said that the they included. My mind's like a steel trap with this stuff, right? I think he said that they included. Parts in the boxes, lots of extra parts. Eesh. Yeah. You buy a new Hyundai, comes from, what is it, Korea? I, I, it doesn't come with a new engine in the trunk. No, no. <laughs> Sometimes my analogies are spot on, and that might be one I should write down. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to speak on something I, I don't know. But you're also getting ahead of yourself, because now we're back at square one. Sign the lease, or don't. Yep. Keep your money. Okay, perfect. You've heard me say this. The poor spend money. They get that check, whether it's a stimulus check or their tax refund, and they run out and spend it. Yes. The middle class, they're the ones that make the biggest mistake because they save their money. Okay. You can be rich and cheap, and all anybody sees is cheap. 
the, the rich, the third category, they invest mm-hmm. money. And there's a caveat to all of these. The poor spend money they don't have. The middle class save money when they shouldn't. And the rich invest other people's money. Once you have that <laughs> lease signed, which will cost you nothing, you have that piece of paper, which yeah. leads to a physical location with all of the infrastructure. You'll find yeah. out that your 50 grand stays safely tucked away under your mattress where it should be. You hedge that money. If that money yeah. is in a low interest bearing account with your local credit union, they're the ones that you go to and say, hey, I've got to do X, Y, and Z. Spend it on something else. Because the lease allows you to go to the distributors who go to the equipment manufacturers and get the loan done. Okay. So on that stuff, you you, you go for your loan for the equipment. Do you loan any of the improvements to the space on that? If you don't have a thin red cent to spend on building laundromats, you'll be fine. Yep. But you don't want to say that. You don't want to okay. throw your arms in the air. And t- but how do you get away with it? Because of tenant improvement money. Because of what I taught you through the course. I assume yes. you never knew that rent abatement existed until you found me. Most people don't. No, Most. I didn't. I didn't. The people that I That's consult with who've already owned a small business for months or years or decades, pizzerias that have been in their family for 30 years, they say, what the hell is free rent? We never knew. Exactly. We gave first and last a security deposit that will never see a 30-year loan to the landlord. Yes. Because when you go to the landlord and say, I want to start a Braille dartboard business, he says, great. Sounds good. I'm sure you're, you'll do well. First and last, a deposit. As he gets stuck in the head with a dart. Yes. I'm sure you never heard of TI money before. These no. landlords, big or small, they have cash they can throw at you. And if you, my friend, we, we've all heard about the 50K, keep that to yourself. It's nobody's damn business. Because yeah. dollar signs start to pop up. Mm-hmm. And the charlatans start to say, well, I need to get that money. That'll be a nice deposit, Joel. Just give us that. And it may be a colloquial conversation, but you never even notice when you let that slip. We're proud. We saved some money. Yeah. If I'm wearing a gold watch, somebody might want to get close and see what brand it is and say, okay, keep your money. Yeah. In this case, this I'm, I'm opinionated because I know that this works. And I know it's a simple matter to go to any landlord, new space, new build, I want to put a laundromat. First of all, you're going to be hard fought trying to find a landlord that actually wants one. Laundromats have a reputation for being nasty, filthy, old stores. Why? Oh, if it wasn't for that, we couldn't scoop them up for free. I'm in flux with clients daily. We're grinding it out, making the calls, Then we get traction with the letter of intent. Mm -hmm. Then the lease comes over. You know this. That's when we say, oh, I see there's a $7,000 deposit here. Well, scratch that. They've already decided. They've made the decision mentally, whoever it is, the landlord himself or herself or their agent, hey, we're going to give these folks this lease. You don't want to call day one, moment one on a cold call and say, ha, ha. I want the laundry for free and I don't want to give you any money. Doesn't work that way. It wouldn't go over very good. eh? No, it doesn't go over very good. Only discuss the hard points once they've made up their mind to give you the location. My record stands as perfect. None of my clients have ever given a deposit. Nice. Well, you should know this. Eventually they say... We've always received a deposit from every single one of our clients. I love that because they're standard lines. I say, okay, well, you can't say that tomorrow. Yeah. I'm positive that I've had clients in my almost 20 years of doing this that have decided to go buy a laundromat. I never hear from them again. Yeah. No one wants to go to a cocktail party and say, hey, Lloyd, love that Rolex. Where'd you get it? Stock market. 
I saw you pulled up in a BMW. Where'd you get that? Uh, the laundromat that I <laughs> got for free. Nobody's going to say exactly. the laundromat that I spent $300,000 on. And then you see his wife drop her champagne, <laughs> spit out her caviar because don't talk about that, Lloyd. Exactly. That, was a, that was a wreck. Yeah. Everybody wants to talk about their successes. They don't want to shine the light on their failures. Yeah. You pour over every, every laundromat personality. They all have a story of woe where they bought their first store. My tiny little niche, my tiny little corner, I'm trying to get everyone in a position where they don't make that mistake, including you. Perfect. Thanks for helping everyone else in the entire YouTube universe to understand that you never want to build or buy a laundromat. I thought it was clear. Perfect. Get well, back you, in the saddle, you, scout the stores, put them in front of me, and let's do the work. Again, no sour grapes. I appreciate you. I, I, I have clients that have babies. They, they, they move from Atlanta to New York or Texas to LA. They have a horrible divorce. They get in a bad car crash. I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. They never look back. But if you come at me with a question like that, I want to give you the full and total answer. I don't want to email you back four words and say, don't ever think about it. That's five. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Exclamation point. Yeah. I, back in I the saddle, that. no matter how long it takes, you're doing it properly in this way. Perfect. All right, dude. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank me when I've done Have something for you. <laughs> you did. Don't. It's bullshit. You gave me a bunch of advice. All right. Ciao. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye. <sighs> All right, let's look at a few comments, kids. John, you're always here. Floyd is watching from Australia. Good eye. I have uh, Neil Chantry and a couple of success stories in Australia that I'm aware of. Probably going to go to a Formula One race there next year with Shelly Michelle, my gorgeous wife, and uh, meet up with some folks. Laundromats are universally smaller here, Floyd says. You are correct, Floyd. They are smaller. So you want to run a big wash-dry fold outfit out of there and make even more. Just wondering what the smallest number of washers is you'd recommend. Very good, somebody probably already answers because my people know that. 25 washers. If they're smaller there, you do wash, dry, fold to make up the difference. Floyd, get the course. Danny, new stores never make profit or just takes longer time to get even and then going into profit. He's talking about a new build. You could build the wash and fold, pick up delivery. Why would you, Gabe? Were you listening to this 30 minutes? Why would you do that? If you live in a very small town and there are no laundromats, don't build one. Do something else. If you live on, a, on an island and you're the only resident, you don't need a laundromat. Gabe says, I do acknowledge that the hole is deep and difficult to get out, though. Gabe, did you build a laundromat? Here's another story for another day. If you did get the stinking course, these aren't sales calls. I'm not here to force you into anything. Talking dart is a professional darts tournament machine. I don't know what that means. Jeff, how difficult is it to change the wash layout from one long alley to multiple rows? Why would you? The whole reason we go after these locations is infrastructure. I've done it because sometimes they're horrible layouts. Back in the 70s, they did home style laundromats, meaning Every, the thought was every row needs to have washing, drying, and folding. So it was dryers on the end, the washers in the middle on the row, and then the folding tables on the end of the row all the way down. Horrible. 
everybody's bumping elbows. It was trying to herd cats. So I've swapped those stores and changed everything. There's so many fish in the sea. There's so many horrific, nasty, filthy laundromats, whether you're in central Ohio, Canada, or anywhere in the world. Why would you go murder yourself to change out a horribly built out store? Just look at it and chalk it up to poor bastard. Sorry, you don't want that place. Gabe says he has the course. Well, Gabe, all right, we're having a conversation. Why did you go into specifics about how hard it is to come out of the hole? Do you have a store? John is still scouting. I'm about to cut this thing short, ladies and gentlemen. I'm jumping on a phone call with a new client. You could be one of them. It's pretty simple. If you already have the course, email me. I charge for my time, but I want to be honest. I don't think I've ever publicized this. I don't limit my time. I give you my cell phone number. It's not a special line. I don't have a phone on my desk. No one's ever taken advantage of it. I don't think you will either. We're all like-minded individuals that want to own these places. I've done it. I think our call is proof positive. And this is what I do. It's not for the YouTube machine. I can't just email someone back and be emphatic and say, for the love of God, don't do that. You heard the words. I'm gonna get some massages later on a different topic. So I'll be very relaxed tomorrow. Each and every one of you, the call to action, click the thing, do the stuff. Give me, uh, give me a thumbs up and comment if you don't mind in the actual video because all these comments go away. I'm Danny. I am an expert in nothing. You guys help me to get better every day. Cheers. I'm pretty sure this hot water heater's got a few more good years left in it.